for, of course, all of our fellow players over in China who have been facing a bit of a problem because, uh, yeah, relations between Natties and Blizzard broke down, yeah. uh, which uh, would mean WoW not well, the license expiring, yeah. and then there being no World of Warcraft for anyone to play in that yeah. country, wow. which is a big deal because that's a lot of them. China's a massive market for WoW. Again, the the little, you know, the way sometimes you just have your go to factoids for a situation. Yep. My go to factoid is the World of War, the Warcraft movie would have been an utter box office bomb if it weren't for Chinese theaters. Uh, anyway, though. To uh, hopefully have some good news for um, all of our fellow players over in uh, over in China. Uh, good news for some, bad news for others. Oh, yep. Okay. So, stuff broke down between Blizzard and Natties, but we have some new revelations. A new global realm category has been added alongside the Taiwanese realm list, including a few classic and retail WoW realms. No official announcements by Blizzard China or Taiwan, uh, but it seems likely uh, done as a response. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, so all of the players from mainland China are going to play in Taiwanese servers. Yeah. That won't work. That? Oh, no. <laughs> that really won't work for reasons I'm sure you're aware of. Oh, no. Yeah. It's all those uppity residents of Chinese, or what's it called? Chinese Taipei. It's not what yeah. they had to call it for Overwatch League. Yeah. <laughs> and it is going exactly as you expect. Holy hey, fuck, this that's is... a new realm. Oh. What language is being typed in that realm? Oh, we have a problem. We have a problem. Uh, what was the game called? Deviation? Uh, div is it Devotion? Devotion. Yeah, yeah it was the yeah. uh, Taiwanese horror game. Apparently it's pretty good, but uh, there was, I think it was a Winnie the Pooh like reference yeah. in some old art yeah. uh, that was like found <gasps> and that led to uh, a, bit, a bit of a witch hunt. Um, so yeah, suffice to say, it's an extremely tense geopolitical situation going on there. Um, I think before the situation in Europe broke out, it's perhaps one of the regions that most people were looking at. Um, many, you know, many global superpowers like to go on little boat trips to the area to prove that they're like, huh, our boats are here. Um, the, the other people in, in Taiwan are, are, a lot of them would, you know, you could maybe say are pretty, uh, pretty scared of, you know, bad shit going down. Uh, this is all tied, of course, into the markets and everything because one of the most influential, uh, like at the very fucking supply level companies is TSMC, uh, which is Taiwan Semiconductor manufacturing, manufacturing Corporation, Corporation yeah. which was founded by a guy that used to work at Texas Instruments, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I think he came back and the Taiwanese government was like, fuck yeah, let's... Let's go, boys! <laughs> I guess that's what they were like, and they, I don't know, help with, like, subsidies or some shit. Um, but anyway, it's just suffice to say, it's fucking... Yeah, it's like, if shit goes goes down there, get ready for a lot of bad things, and also a semiconductor shortage. Um, oh, yeah, I'd love, I'd love another one of those. So, you know, there's just so much tension. Hmm. So much tension. And that... Uh, like, so, the, the, you know, the full propaganda, like, machine yeah. of, of the Communist Party is... Very much, you know, no, no, we're one country, they're break off, dissident nation. Uh, and then in Taiwan, well, they view themselves, uh, I, I guess, as in, the, the Republic of, yeah, and, you know, and, of China, like the true. Yeah, um, an, an independent sovereign nation that's sitting there being like, we are who we are. Yeah. We're, we're not you, sorry. Oh, dear. Some bad things are going to happen. Um, because of that, they've been isolated from, um, you know, a lot of kind of like big global institutions mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah. that's just to say, like, you are dealing with one of the most charged, most dramatic, most like emotionally evocative to those who are involved in it situations in the world. And now they're on the same server. This yeah. is this is like saying that, I mean, not literally like saying, because it's a very different historical situation, but, you know, let's just say there was a World of Warcraft server during the Troubles and both mm -hmm. Catholics and Protestants started playing it. Or yeah. there was, you know, ah, yes, this is the Israel and Palestine World of Warcraft server. You know, just <laughs> any of those, oh, ah, yep, yeah, here's the Russian-Ukrainian Warcraft uh, server. Uh, you know, it's... A little bit like that, just in case you're kind of not aware of the levels of, yeah. to put it in modern uh, language, the levels of oof, the levels of yikes, um, big yikes, and big the oof. levels of fr. I cannot read. 
Homeless? That's pretty. Uh, Boston. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't no, know Zoomer speak. Bo- I'm Boston's sorry. A good thing. I don't. I actually looked this up uh, earlier today because because uh, I fucking burst out laughing at a post and I was like, I have to. F-. And then someone's like, what does busting even mean? I'm like, it's like busting, but like using it in a, in a good way, probably related to like some like cultural American dialect. And then I don't know what for real no cap came, but on God for real no cap. I don't know where those came from, but those are also super terms. No cap? No cap. No as cap. In cap. No cap as in no lang, as in... For real, it's obviously <laughs> FI for real, yeah. So I would say, la- so, so if you said something that was that I didn't expect and was very interesting, but also kind of good, I'd be like, no cap, meaning, are you telling the truth? But obviously not in like such a formal term of, are you telling the truth? More, now, more, 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 really. To to go a slight bit less, you know. Um, I don't want to say like a ooh, big man history or, you know, this country versus that country history. Um, there is always, you know, to take another example, the likes of, say, the Olympics, hmm. you know, where it's like, oh, sports brings us together. So there obviously could be situations here. <laughs> to, to, to lie to the, uh, yeah. to, to lie to the drug use of uh, some countries. <sighs> <laughs> Did you know there? Oh, I don't want to do it. FIFA is a great organization and uh, yeah. everything's always pure and fantastic. Yeah. Um, but you, you, you know the point, right? So uh, you, you would, I think, uh, if we're to say that humanity is the common thing that binds all of us, you would hope that maybe some Taiwanese players and some Chinese players uh, could maybe find themselves in a dungeon together. And maybe they would see, oh, we actually can get along just fine. As somebody in just uh, somebody in chat said uh, about, I don't exactly know the situation with uh, Cyprus, but yeah, I met Turks as a Cypriot in WoW, and it was fine, which is awesome. Yeah, this is this is like one of the powers uh, of of games and the internet because it um, you know, kind of elevates us into the global level where we're all a lot yeah. more similar. Yeah. However, there are reports of things going a wee bit wrong, as we have here. We up just reports of. Yeah, reports of Chinese players reporting Taiwanese players for writing in the wrong language, and vice versa. Oh, like, okay, yeah. so traditional and simplified is yeah. I I completely mm. could do, okay. I completely confess I have seen traditional and simplified. Yeah. I know that Mandarin and Cantonese is like that. Mm. That's the one that I know about. So yeah. interesting. Yeah. So it's literally just like that's the wrong language to the servers. Like, no, you're using the wrong language because we belong here. We're right. In that kind of like the sense that prop- the propagandization has done that, where like the Chinese people look like, Taiwan go to no, China, so they're, like they're fighting each other, they're calling each other all sorts of names, all sorts of things, putting each other from things and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's like it's like a as Keith B said earlier, and I had to stop myself from exploding with laughter. Said they've put the war back in Warcraft. It's just not the way they intended. Well, this is like uh, like some sort of... I know that there's... I forget what it is, but I think there's some sci-fi game where mm. it's the equivalent of countries just play StarCraft with each other and uh, the loser side, their StarCraft players die. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Or, you know, they just get vaporized or something. So it's some way of like, oh, we can all fight war with robots and, you know, it won't be real, mm. the horrors of war, uh, but there'll still be consequences. Uh, it's like, yeah, great, we're now... <laughs> global tensions playing out via World of Warcraft. I mean, hell, in the same way that, like, terrorists used to use WoW to talk to each other. Yeah. And, you know... Uh, was not a thing. So, that... I believe there were a number of three-letter agencies said that was the case. Uh-oh. And that's allegedly why... And that's allegedly why there's a lot of people from, say, and the FBI high up in Activision Blizzard, because they were very worried of World of Warcraft being that. Because this was early days in the internet. Oh, World of Warcraft was very interesting. Because in the same way that the FBI had a Freedom of Information Act, uh, Act request on the amount of times someone, uh, people were caught for planning crimes when they added in Minecraft at the end. There was a, there was a, there was a request set to see how many times that actually like happened in a way that was like, oh, we had someone said that and then did a crime and we've caught them and we see it. Mm. It was the thing of they were terrified of it. But I think, and I'm definitely like, <clears throat> I, I just don't take this as a statement of fact. Take this as, I think, I think I read this a long time ago, was that there's basically no evidence of that ever actually happening. Oh, it was all just, shit. it was all just the feds, but like, this will definitely happen. So we need inside Activision Blizzard to make sure we can monitor all the chat so, activity that happens. Uh, Matt, have yeah. you ever watched... 
Amazon Prime's Jack Ryan. No, <laughs> the I most, watched the first episode and then didn't. Yeah, it is the most. We have created this show out of 10 show. Yeah. Um, but I will confess, I was high as shit when I watched this. I'm like, oh, it's John from The Office. Look at him go. He's going yeah. to sh- He's going to shoot. Oh, fuck. Uh, was the, the final episode of its second season is called Strongman. And it's nice. just Jim Halpert is going to execute basically Nicholas Maduro. <laughs> You're nice. like, holy fuck. Um, but in the first season of that, they do the thing, I think, where like the, you know, uh, main villain guy, uh, like they, they catch him via video game. Yeah. But of course, it's a video game as depicted on a television oh, no. show. So it's very funny. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of, uh, fun. Um, I mean, I guess this gets to be a dry run for the war. So, oh, um, Jesus. maybe we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to it's, learn what happened. It's dire, but it's also at least Chinese players can play. At least they can play on servers. It's more ping, uh, related and closer to their language and culture. What I would think though with this is, um, actually to be, to be real about it for a second with Blizzard, um, I wonder what the implications of, of this would be. I mean, even, um, you know, I, I know like Chinese players are able to access our version of Steam yeah. if they use a VPN. And then there is the official Steam China, which has less titles on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wonder if this is just a situation like that, where, um, can, so can a Chinese player not using a VPN access the global server? I assume they, I assume they have to uh, VPN it. Yeah, that, that, okay. So that'd be my assumption as well. So this is a situation where, yeah, this is a situation where Blizzard would still actually get sub money from all of these people, but they'd totally sidestep mm-hmm. having to go into a licensing agreement with, uh, you know, with, uh, say, Tencent, NetEase, um, any, any of those groups. And I would wonder then, hmm. is, how are Blizzard planning to renew the license? Or are they just going to open a global server? Because then it's interesting. If they have done that, then they've just completely thrown their Taiwanese players under the bus. Yeah. Because they cannot get their money right with, um, well, yeah, you know, just the sort of yeah. the risk of doing um, business there. That's where you get the fun part of, especially because I believe uh, Blizzard's Taiwanese outfit had problems in Shadowlands where the servers were like kind of busted and shitty and they haven't managed them the best. You do sit down and go, well, from a uh, purely pragmatic and profiteering perspective of a business, how many players are Taiwanese? How many players are Chinese? Obviously, you're going to lose some if you're not natively supporting and you have to go to the global. But if you've got a lot of people playing your game and then you pull the, you pull the rug out from underneath them, they're going to find a way to play the game. Rumbly bit, yeah. Same way people were playing the shit at Lost Ark before it launched in the West, especially as the Western news was announced, they went, I'm going to go play on Korea, Japan, or Russia. And you're like, okay, so now you've got this thing of Blizzard going, and who knows if it was like a fully uh, thing that like Blizzard uh, in like California were like, global server in Taiwan, do it. Or that's a good idea, Taiwanese uh, outfit, work away. It's more like, did someone just go, <clears throat> I see an opportunity, this can't go wrong. Well, and because it's obviously it's called global, it's obviously kind of sneaky, sneaky. But where it is, you it, know, you know the intent is there. Yeah, especially because they added Alipay and WeChat as payment <laughs> options. Yeah. Like this is them coming out and saying it. Yeah. This is directly targeting Chinese players. Yeah. So their intent is basically Blizzard Entertainment have caused the invasion of Taiwan. They have uh, <laughs> in world in World of Warcraft, but they are trying to circumvent the and, need. Uh, They're trying to circumvent the need for a. Uh, Licensed to operate in China to operate World of Warcraft. Where, weren't they called Higgins boats? The I the boats remember. used. Um, weren't those the boats? The you know the invasion craft used to land troops in D Day. But basically, oh those Blizzard has caused the invasion of Taiwan, and AliPay and WeChat integration are the Higgins boats. Yeah, perfect theory. No, but um, th- that they are doing this though uh, is yeah pretty pretty much that. And you know it's interesting when I just think about AliPay and WeChat. Um, because like WeChat, like what you can do in WeChat as an app is fucking cracked. Whenever you hear that's that's not PayPal. Like, (laughs) yeah. Whenever you hear Musk talk about like making the X app, you know, like, Ooh, X, the everything app, dude, that's just WeChat because WeChat is, you know, you can do all your WhatsApp like things, all of your other social networking things, you know, you pay using uh, WePay. 
Um, you know, there's plenty of, uh, you get plenty of testimonies for people, um, you know, maybe doing some business. So they're going to head over to, um, you know, to a city like Shenzhen and they want to go to the coffee shop. Right. And they're like, fuck, I don't have WePay. They don't take cash. What do I do? You know, I guess maybe you need to get your Chinese friend to buy it for you. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And it's kind of funny because that was a very bizarre arcane concept to us like 10 years ago. I have not done a cash transaction in years. Yeah, months maybe. Yeah. Like I straight up have not done a cash transaction. Okay, other than paying for food in the restaurant underneath our office, which is cash only, oh, uh, yeah. I have like, yeah, because I just tap with my phone. And it's kind of funny because that used to be like a very, like at times when it was completely normalized over there, you know, I, I, well, I guess that's just the thing. There was a whole bunch of tech adoption that was like way faster. Um, it, yeah, in the East, I guess. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. totally a side tangent, but it is interesting. I just bring it up to say that in the way that maybe uh, since COVID has happened, maybe mm -hmm. I, I just say COVID because that's when a lot of places really wanted their customers to use contactless. Um, to touch cash. And then because like I don't even carry a card now because... Yeah. Like with Apple Pay, I can do contactless transactions of any size, which is a bit spooky whenever you do it for like a business spend. You're like, is this camera that much money? And did I just, did did that happy beep just make the money go away? Holy <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, j just to say that like those things that like for us are kind of like new and cool, um, they've been way ahead of us in that shit. Which also means they've been way ahead on the one the one app that does everything, yeah. which also has all of your data and all of your transactions, all of your spending, all of your messaging, <laughs> and the government has access to it. Sweet, no worries. Um, and that is to basically say to people just how big WeChat is. Mm -hmm. uh, WeChat Pay is so big. Um, I mean, Alipay, um, yeah. I mean, as, as well. So yeah, these are like the really big payment providers, um, in in china they're they're absolutely massive mm -hmm. um and it is interesting just the you know in different countries like i know in a lot of um, a lot of african countries like their banking system or like some of their banking stuff it's like very tech first yeah. because they're only building out uh you know that infrastructure when there is this like new technology available they're kind of like yeah it, it's just really interesting i I, I forget what it was. I think it was like uh, a few YouTube videos. And then I just did a bunch of Wikipedia trolling on like some fintech startups in like Kenya, Nigeria and stuff. And I was like, holy fuck, this is really fascinating. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I love having payment processors. Uh, be, I, I love a small number of payment processors controlling every payment that happens on the planet. That makes me very happy. That's not going wrong at all Great. right now, um, recently. Introducing Bell Pay. Uh, uh, if, your, if your transaction is not based, Matt will decline it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> based on what, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every time. Yeah, you're like, is this a sound financial investment? Declined. <laughs> is this hentai art from a random artist? Approved. Yeah, approved. Perfect. Approved and 50% off. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there we go. Well, <laughs> bussing transactions. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Okay.